What is going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing this book, Domain Driven Design by Eric Evans. A very popular book. I previously had a video on this where I was kind of telling you that it was on my reading list. Uh, super, super popular. So in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing this book and the video is gonna contain a couple different sections. Uh, the first one, I'm just gonna talk about the book in general, what it's about, where you can get it, how much it costs, a little bit about the author, so on and so forth. Secondly, I'm gonna talk about the good things about this book in terms of its content. Uh, third, I'm gonna talk about the good things as well, but in terms of its style, I think there's a lot of style elements that make this a very good read. And finally, I'm gonna talk about things that I don't really like about this book, because unfortunately, no matter how good a book is, there's always gonna be things that someone doesn't really like, and I'm gonna share that with you today. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about this book, Domain Driven Design by Eric Evans, uh, commonly known as the Blue Book because of its iconic blue color, uh, because of the fact that it's on pretty much every software design, software programmer, developer reading list, just because it's, it's so influential. It was published in 2003 by Eric Evans, um, and it's available on Amazon, Indigo, all the, the major book retailers. Costs about $60 American, unless you're Canadian like me, you have to pay like 90 Canadian dollars. Um, it, it does sound a little bit steep, and it is a little bit steep, let's be real. But it's more of a textbook than just a normal book in that sense. Um, it, it's really got a lot of detail. It's over 552 pages, 528 pages uh, according to this. Uh, so it's very, very detailed, very, very rich. Of course, it's hardcover as well. So you can, uh, you get that extra quality out of it. And it also looks really great on your library when it's right beside Clean Code and Clean Architecture by Robert Martin. But anyways, a little bit about the author. So I, I looked into Eric Evans' biography and um, just to learn a little bit more about him, I wanted to know like who is this guy and why should I believe what he's talking about? Um, so I looked into his biography and he's been doing software design and large scale distributed systems since the 90s or so. Uh, and he particularly specializes in domain modeling and, and how to simplify complexity in software. So that's what this guy is all about. He actually leads a um, kind of community group now. It's actually a consulting group called Domain Language where he kind of tries to help other groups that are trying to simplify the complexity in software. So Q, that is what this book is about. It is all about making it easier for you to build systems to write code in an extensible way that's easy to understand. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into a little bit about what are the good things about this book. Now in terms of content, um, something that I really liked about this book was this introduction of this term called the ubiquitous language. Uh, and this term doesn't really mean a lot at face value, but when he kind of explains it, it makes sense. And he doesn't actually define it. I didn't find a definition of this term in the book. He just kind of refers to it. But it's closely tied uh, to the concept of communication. Communication between your developers, between your users, between your stakeholders. So it's all about communicating with each other and creating models that reflect what you're actually trying to build in your software. And I'll give you a perfect example about this. Um, so in the book, he talks about kind of this dialogue between a user and a developer. And they're talking about this in the context of a shipping app or like a cargo app that has uh, kind of multiple stops and where like these ships need to go and drop off stuff at certain points, pick up stuff at other points, and then go to other locations. It's actually a very common theme in this book. He uses this example a lot. So if you're in the logistics space, this is actually a really, really good book for you. Um, but anyways, so he uses this example and he, he's talking about this dialogue between this user and this developer. And in the first iteration, not using the ubiquitous language, the developer is talking about this concept of multiple stops. And he says, oh yeah, we're gonna have multiple stops and they're gonna be rows in the database and we're gonna use that to, to represent the stops. And then the user is like, yeah, whatever, I don't know what you're talking about. And then in the second iteration, when they kind of talk this through a little bit more using the ubiquitous language, they realize that what they're actually talking about, the entity that they're referring to is an itinerary. And an itinerary is very close to what the user sees this problem as and what the developer can represent it as in terms of system design, in terms of code and classes and everything like that. So you really start to see the value of having high levels of communication to really synthesize the models that are used in your application. So that's something that I think it kind of happens in the real world very often, but you don't really think about how these things happen, right? Uh, just kind of a natural flow of developing software, especially large scale systems. But when you formalize it like this, when you talk about, you know, you give it a name, ubiquitous language, communication, it really makes you realize that like, yeah, it's really important to talk to 
my users, talk to my stakeholders, get the developers, everyone in a room, and make sure the things that you're modeling in your system are actually reflective of the concepts that people are using in the real world. So that's the first thing I really like about the book is this usage of the term ubiquitous language and kind of highlighting that communication is a very important part of building these large scale systems. Now, the second element that I really liked about this book is this concept of entities and value objects, entity objects or value objects. Um, and this is, again, something that you don't really think about while you're building systems, but something when I read it, I'm like, this is so true. Uh, and it's, it's very revealing because it gives you a lot of tips about this. But anyways, what are entity objects? What are value objects? Why is this important? So an entity object is something that um, like conceptually, it has a state, it has an ID. If something has an ID, it is an entity object, okay? So it's a unique instance of something. So say, let's say for example, um, say we're in the credit card space when there's a transaction. Uh, a transaction is a stateful object, right? It's got an ID, it's got an amount, it belongs to a customer. It goes through all these different phases where you can track it through time. So maybe initially there's like an authorization to make sure the pin is right. Um, and then once it's it's authorized, then it goes into like the committed state where it's actually verified with all the, the card holders like Visa, MasterCard, so on and so forth. But it's this idea that this object is an instance of something and it goes through these logical states. Now contrast that with a value object. Um, that's what uh, Evans calls it. And the value object is the concept that there are other types of objects that are not stateful, that are just basically they're objects in the sense that they, they have characteristics, but they don't have an ID. They don't mean anything other than the data that is presented in the object itself. And a good example of this is, let's say like a snapshot for a dashboard, right? When you have a dashboard applications, you have like a ton of data showing in this same example, like number of transactions today, number of orders today, total revenue, yada, yada, yada. And you refresh that every minute or whatever. Now this thing, like it's a snapshot, the data that, that drives it, um, the snapshot itself has no meaning. It's constantly regenerated. It has no, no ID, uh, no entity. It doesn't, it doesn't move through time. Um, however, the underlying data that is used to drive it are entities. So this is something that you don't really think about as you're building systems, but it's an important distinction. And I don't want to spoil the book. He goes into a lot more detail about the difference between these two things and when one is applicable or not. But if you're using entity and value objects, as I've described, let me know in the comments down below. I want to know what your entity objects are in your application. Now, the third thing that I really like, um, if you don't know a lot about me, I'm a very big fan of service-oriented architecture and so is Eric Evans. So he talks a lot about service-oriented architecture as a way to simplify large-scale distributed system. So if you haven't heard of service-oriented architecture before, it's the idea that when you have a very large system, you can't just use this monolithic architecture and have everything wired and high cohesion between these components. Uh, it's a very useful exercise to separate concepts into different domains and have those domains kind of defined as services. So for example, going back to this credit card application that I was referring to, um, so maybe in this credit card application, you have an authorization service where the authorization service receives input in terms of the user ID, in terms of the pin code. And all this service does, it doesn't care about anything else. It doesn't care about customers, doesn't care about anything. All it knows is that if I'm provided with this ID and this pin code, is it valid? Right. So that's the idea of carving out responsibility. Now, another service in this ecosystem could be something that actually handles the transactions themselves. So actually committing them, saving to databases, keeping a log of transactions as they occur through time. And that can be called the transaction service. So depending on your domain, what your software is about, obviously these things are going to be different. But he talks about the advantages of service oriented architecture and kind of carving out responsibilities of systems so that each of them represents something that is key to the business and that each system has its own responsibility. Uh, so it's a very important concept. I'm going to come up with a video soon on service oriented architecture as well, if you are curious about learning more about it. Now, moving on to the good parts in terms of style. And I think really this is why I enjoyed this book so much. Um, so what I like about what Eric Evans does in this is that he provides a lot of sections with real life dialogues or well, maybe not real life, but hypothetical dialogues between two people or a group of people. And he, and he does this to kind of lay out how an idea develops 
from a problem into the solutions. So he shows you the kind of logical progression and things that people would probably say when they're trying to solve a particular problem. So I really like the usage of dialogue between multiple users or groups of people as a way to show how these concepts are applied in the real world. And he does this a lot with respect to specific examples. So um, he uses this cargo logistics example throughout the book actually. And it's about like a, a cargo system that has multiple stops, itineraries, there's pickups and drops off, drop offs, there's a routing service, all these kinds of things. So when he's talking about these concepts throughout the book, he always relates it back to this kind of idea of this logistics um, application. And the dialogue uh, in terms of demonstrating some of the concepts that he's teaching is always within the context of this logistics application. So it's very, very useful in terms of understanding the ideas that he's trying to demonstrate and kind of following them through a logical progression of just the concept all the way through to how people will actually talk about it and come to their own conclusions in terms of applying that concept. So I thought that was a very, very cool thing in this book, something that I really, really appreciated, made it a little bit easier to read and understand. Now, the final thing I really liked about this book in terms of style is its great use of diagrams to illustrate points. And that is especially true on the covers. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but on the front of the book here, he's got these covers uh, talk about the main concepts of the book. So it's always there to remind you. Then on the back, he's got these excellent diagrams as well, these flow charts. I hope you can see this. Um, but throughout the book, not only are there, there are these diagrams, but there's tons and tons of diagrams in terms of uh, building relationships between components, between systems. He's also got a bunch of code examples as well, which are very useful to show how he applies certain concepts to the actual code that you're writing. So that's something I really, really liked about this book. Now, moving on to the things I didn't like about this book, and there's only only two. Um, the first thing that I didn't like was that it's a, it's a long and very thick read. It's 528 pages, I think it said, and it's not an easy read. Not something that I would suggest you read before going to bed. I think you really need to be focused to really understand what he's talking about here. Uh, it almost reads like um, an essay in some respects. It's, it's very thick language. So it's not something that I would recommend, you know, before you go to sleep. You really need to, to sit down and read this book with a purpose. You need to kind of be fully into it in order to grasp the concepts that he's trying to explain. Uh, for me, that's, you know, it, it's a mixed bag. I like to read before I go to bed. So I have to find time outside of my schedule uh, to read and absorb this information well. So that's something I didn't like about this book is that it's a bit long, a bit arduous to get through. Um, but again, the concepts really are valuable. Now, the second thing I didn't like about this book is that unfortunately in the second half, uh, I really liked the first half of this book, but I thought the second half was a little bit long winded. Uh, he does talk about some concepts that are useful, like uh, conceptual contouring on how to carve out systems, but it seemed very long winded. I didn't really like the second half too much, but I think there are some concepts that are worth getting through. So overall, if it's not already clear what I think about this book, I think it is an absolute must of a read for any software developer developer in any company of any size. I think every individual, no matter your expertise level, if you're just a brand new beginner all the way up to a seasoned veteran, uh, you're going to find something in this book that's useful. So again, I highly, highly recommend this book. I'm going to put a link to the where you can get it in Amazon down below uh, and you can kind of purchase it there. Again, it's around 60 bucks American. Um, this book is on like every reading list as well for software developers, software engineers. So very, very common. You'll see this all over the internet. Uh, again, highly recommend it. And I hope you enjoyed this review and kind of learned something about this book and why it's a great thing. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you next time.